If you've heard of microplots in long COVID or ME-CFS, you've probably wondered whether or not you can test for them. And although unfortunately the most specific tests for these problems are not yet widely available, there is a widely available test in standard blood work that can give you a strong clue as to whether or not this problem applies to you. And in this video, I'm going to talk all about it. First, if you're new to this channel, this is a place where I talk about ME-CFS and long COVID research in simple, accessible ways, as well as treatments that I, as an ME-CFS patient, have tried in order to improve my condition. Now, in a previous video, I talked all about microplots, how they're formed, the kind of symptoms they create, the fact that they make the blood thick, even darker in color, as you can see from this picture of my blood when it was heavily microclotted, as well as the fact that they just impede the transfer of oxygen from the bloodstream to pretty much everywhere else in the body. And although there are tests, for example, by Professor Risha Pretorius out in South Africa or Dr. Beata Jaeger in Germany that can detect the presence of these microclots very specifically, standard clotting tests, such as those for D-dimer, usually do not really give any sense of their existence. However, there is a basic blood test that any GP can order that can give you a strong hint as to whether or not this problem applies to you. And the name of that test is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR rate. Now the ESR rate simply measures how quickly or slowly your blood settles down in a test tube. If the blood is settling very slowly, the result of the test will be very low. If the blood is settling down very quickly, the result of the test will be very high. Now for women under the age of 50, uh, the cutoff point for a high test result is 20, and for men at the age of 50, the cutoff result for a high test is 15. For people over the age of 50, those numbers go a little bit higher. Now, under most circumstances, doctors are only really concerned about a high ESR rate, because that can be a sign of various serious health issues, such as cancer, kidney disease, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and of course, if there is an active infection. If you return with a very low ESR rate, most doctors will not be concerned about this and will feel that this is not indicative of anything in particular. However, we know that in ME-CFS, and therefore most likely in long COVID, it is highly common for patients to return very low ESR rate results. I'm talking about three, two, one, even zero in some cases. And what this means is that the blood is settling down very, very slowly. Now let's think about why that might be. If you have microclots, the blood becomes much thicker. And if something is much thicker, there's more resistance within that substance to settling down. If something is not thick, it settles down really quickly. So could it be the case that these microclots actually resulting in low ESR rates? It's highly likely. Now in my own case, uh, I tested my ESR rate and it indeed was very low. And the result was just two, as you can see in this lab report here, uh, which is in French. So vitesse de sedimentation is the same thing as ESR rate. And as I know from my own case, my blood was extensively microclotted. And you can learn all about my successful treatment for microclotting uh, when I went to Germany for help apheresis in the video just above right now. But we also know from support forums that many ME-CFS patients have low ESR rates in this way. And it's also been noted in research and by specialists in the field. For example, there's a paper by Hani Raoul Khuzam, MD, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, an update on diagnosis in primary care, in which it was written, the most consistent laboratory abnormality in patients with ME-CFS is an extremely low erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, which approaches zero. Typically, patients with ME-CFS have an ESR rate of zero to three uh, mm per hour. A normal ESR rate, or one that is in the upper reference range, suggests another diagnosis. Similarly, on the wonderful Health Rising blog, Court Johnson wrote about uh, a specialist who has a lot of experience with ME-CFS patients, Dr. Bella Cheddar. And she noted that her ME-CFS patients also tended to have very low ESR rates. So from a blog about that, Court writes, uh, Dr. Cheddar ordinarily encountered increased sedimentation rates in her patients with infections, but then came ME-CFS, a disease triggered by infection, which many people assume is inflammatory in nature. The ESR, or sedimentation rates in many of her ME-CFS patients though, were not just low, but bottom of the barrel low. And the final point I want to make about this is I also wrote to Professor Douglas Kell, who is involved in uh, microclotting research into ME-CFS, and I asked him, is a low ESR rate a really 
uh, good sign that you might have microclotting? And he responded, yes, absolutely. So there you have it. This is something that you can ask your GP to order as part of standard blood tests so that you can be more empowered to know what is happening in your body in relation to your ME-CFS or long COVID. And it's another good example of how the nature of this illness is biomedical and can be picked up in blood tests if you understand what to look for. Now, I should make two very important qualifications. The first is not every ME-CFS or long COVID patient has a low ESR rate. And there are also reports on patient forums of people who have normal or higher ESR rates. And perhaps in those cases, those patients do not have microclotting because it's not something that happens to everyone. Secondly, it's also important to note that low ESR rates can sometimes be associated with other health conditions. For example, congestive heart failure, high white blood cell count, high red blood cell count, sickle cell anemia, and kidney disease. So if you do return a low ESR rate, it's probably a good idea to discuss these other possibilities with your doctor. So that's it for this video. Please leave your experience down below. Have you tested your ESR rate? What was the result? Do the ideas in this video ring true for you? I also have a free medical hypothesis down below about the causes of excessive thirst in ME-CFS, long COVID and POTS. And I also offer a consultation service, which you can find down below as well, if you want to talk about aspects of ME-CFS research with me or uh, if you are interested in talking about various treatments such as brain retraining or other physical strategies with which I am personally familiar. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.